grand tournament. We are in, uh, and just in before the last semi-final, the second semi-final between RDU and Stan Sivka. Only three players remaining in this tournament. One is Orend, already waiting in the grand final spot and just watching, probably watching um, this tournament game to see how it goes and who will be facing against. RDU and Stan had a had a way, uh, like their road was kind of rocky, uh, I would say. Uh, Kaldi was almost, almost, um, it, it, almost able to defeat Stan Sivka. It was 3 2 for Stan. Uh, RDU was having better results with both matches being 3 1 for him against Powder and Tom, but now it will be a standoff between those two players. Who do you put your money on, Sotl? Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with RDU here. I think um, apart from the one little misstep with Patron Warrior that we, we talked about a little bit earlier in the broadcast against the, the Echo Mage, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think he's been um, having some really, really strong lines of play, really, um, you know, seeing the intuitive plays. Um, that, you know, sometimes it's easy for us as casters to see the right lines of play because we have perfect information with both hands. But of course, you know, RDU has really been making those intuitions that you have to make as a player when some of the information is concealed with you and really finding those best lines of play uh, more often than most of the players in the tournament. So uh, I've been really impressed. He's been really on point in this tournament, but that's absolutely not to rule out Stan Sifka. I think he's played very well as well. And uh, I'd love to see this this warrior deck do well because it's definitely one of the uh, the standout decks of the tournament so far. Definitely. Remember, guys, if you want to tweet something about the tournament, use the hashtag #ABSGT to enter a giveaway, like by default, by just typing a tweet with the hashtag. Um, the giveaway, um, uh, the giveaway uh, are the giveaways are Battle.net gift cards. And you also might be featured on stream, and that's like the five minute on the internet fame. Maybe you'll say something dumb and be on Reddit, who knows, right? So, uh, we'll be jumping into the game briefly. Stan is right now cosplaying a chair, so we'll have to wait for him. RDU is ready. D'Artagnan for the second day is still sporting this nice mustache of him. Wait, what happened to the house poster? Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah, Camera, there it camera's is. moving. There it is. Okay. There's a t-shirt on the left side, which is signed by someone, but I didn't ask him who it is. Right, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, it just doesn't well, feel right watching RDU play a tournament game without seeing Hugh Laurie in the background. Like, that just has to be, that just has to be the way forward. But he has to change that for uh, the Hannibal poster. I know that Hannibal is one of his favorite series, if not the favorite, and it's actually my favorite too. So, I would love him to, to see to do that. Anyway. Uh, Stan is, as always, eating something, most likely, but preparing for the semi-final. We know that the lineups are not usual, um, because Stan Sivka is sporting a fatigue control warrior, mm -hmm. I would like to say. And, um, yeah, that's basically it. That's one, one unorthodox thing in the lineup, <laughs> but that's enough, okay? That's enough. Yeah, and just <laughs> thinking about like let's let's use that one deck as the focal point because I guess it is the big talking point. You know, how does it line up against RDU's lineup? We've seen it do very very well against Patron Warrior already, and RDU does have a Patron Warrior um, brought in. But against something like the Paladin, I guess it's built pretty well as well. The Bouncing Blades not too effective, um, but apart from that, you know things like Death Lord, things like Justicar, obviously just the natural warrior things like Death Spite are going to get a lot of work done. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, it looks like the uh, the warrior deck has a, a pretty pretty good uh, pretty good chance against um, RDU's lineup here. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we think he will start with? With the with the warrior, it's actually okay, right? Yeah, he's been leading the warrior. Uh, he definitely led it in the previous series in in his top eight match. Um, I'm not sure what he led off with in his top sixteen, but it seems to me like the warrior here is a, a pretty solid pick. Um, if it runs into the druid, I feel like. The Druid is probably the one deck that you can expect to get a win almost for free out of RDU's lineup mm -hmm, against mm -hmm. your pick. You yeah, know, that's true. Your best matchup is a mirror matchup. So exactly. If you pick, um, if you pick Warrior and just go into it, and he gets the win with his Druid, that's something we talked about a lot yesterday. Which you know, it's never bad to win with a deck in Conquest, but there is such a thing as an unimportant win. And Druid beating Warrior in game one would be one of those unimportant wins. So mm -hmm, I don't, mm -hmm. I definitely don't mind queuing up the Warrior and looking for one of the good matchups. Yeah, but then Paladin has a good matchup against Stan Sivka's Druid, and the Warrior has, and well, actually, the Warrior has kind of, is kind of lacking a good matchup. But at the same time, the Warrior is able to win any game. Yes, 
Um, so. I think it's you know 50 50 ish with Druid. I would go I'd go as far as to say it's slightly favored Patron Warrior versus Druid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know some people definitely disagree with that and think that it's slightly Druid favored, but. Um, as you say, trying to wall out a Patron Warrior 0-3 is never really a good strategy because one of one out of three of those games, they're probably going to get some sort of draw that just absolutely crushes whatever you're playing against. Because make no, no mistake, even the bad matchups like Handlock, the right draw, Patron still tears that matchup apart. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we'll just uh, jump into the game, remember guys to click the follow button because there will be more tournaments, not only Hearthstone on this channel, on the new brand new shiny twitch.tv slash abios tv uh, channel will be more tournaments, um, probably most likely Counter-Strike. And I know a lot of Hearthstone players are watching Counter-Strike, me including. Yeah, and absolutely. Like this this initial Hearthstone event has been pretty goddamn successful. There's 40,000 yep. of you watching right now. So if The you... peak was 44k. 44k, wow. So, yes. you know, if you guys want to go ahead and follow the channel, you can make every every follow-up event as successful as this one. I'm sure that would be amazing, and ABOS would appreciate it enormously. Anyway, game time. Darnus Sasperin is the ramp of choice versus an aggressive deck. Cause you oh, get, definitely. You get the double effect of ramping up your hand and also getting the competitive minion down to fight for the board. And a 2-3 is pretty goddamn competitive against Paladin's early game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely it is. And that's one of the best things you can do. Like turn turn to, uh, turn to 1 Darnus' Aspirin into a Shade of Next Ramus, which is pretty cool against Paladin's. Because most of the time it will be out of range, out of the consecration, like instantly. Yep. And there is no equality in the Secret Paladin. Yeah, very, very rarely do you see an equality in a Secret Paladin. So um, Stan Sivka just has to kind of go through the rigmarole this turn of uh, considering what the secret is in play. I think we it is hidden by the overlay here, but I think there is a secret in play, if I remember rightly. I think there was one played on turn one. Um, uh, well, the, he has four cards. He was going first. So yeah, definitely was, one card was being mm -hmm. played. So yeah, we're not. I'm not entirely sure what that secret is. I missed it being played. Um, but yeah, Stan Sifka is just going to consider all the various secret options this turn. But I don't think there's anything that stops you playing the shade because you know even if it tanks a um, repentance, then sure, right? Like yeah. it ends up in consecrate range eventually. But you know, getting getting on a stealth minion. Yeah. I mean, it's most likely avenge or noble sacrifice. Not an options, right? So why would you play a repentance so early on? But well, you know the the might well actually it might matter against the uh against the uh Darnus's aspirant, but it would be already visible. So yeah, that's not the point. Right. Bon appetit, Stan. <laughs> Stan Sivka, always, always eating. Um but you know, there's a legitimate concern to this, right? Like the the last thing you want is to have something like, you know, a, a concern like it sounds stupid, <laughs> but just a concern like being hungry or needing the bathroom or something like that while you're playing a set of Hearthstone. It is distracting and it does take up a certain amount of your your mental resources to be concerned with that. So making Maybe. sure that he's all properly fueled and everything, as stupid as it sounds, it might actually be kind of sensible. Well it's a comfort zone. Or he's just well, while playing Hearthstone, and Hearthstone and just burns so much calories, he has to instantly recover from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess so. So this turn, Blessing of Kings, right? Do you? Do you bait out first a Keeper? Hmm, that's a good mm. target for the Keeper, so I guess you go with the Blessing of Kings. Yeah, I think just Blessing of Kings and pushing through the damage here just looks pretty damn appealing. The problem is now the Keeper will have a really good value. Basically, the keeper says, "Well, I'll kill your four mana card." Yeah, more or less. And if this avenge, which it turns out to be, gets oh, off, oh, oh, double value for the keeper. That is a huge swing on the board right now. Four three is retained on the board with the shade. The two four comes down and gets a double silence on the blessing of kings and the avenge. That's pretty fantastic. That is a true to the champion to kill off the shade, which is not bad. Because you have to follow up with, uh, with the Mysterious Challenger with almost full value. Because uh, there will be additional advantage, there will be noble sacrifice, there will be the competitive spirit, but no repentance. Anyway, he, also, he also could have consecrated and had a full board clear, right? Uh, if he'd have chosen to go that way. 
But I think it's more important to set up the uh, the weapon for 10-6 when you drop the challenger. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with you. I'm just looking at the ball clear option because also, you know, there's an argument to say clear the board to make room for your 6-6, your six, six, you know, just to dominate on an empty-ish board. But I agree with you. The true silver is going to let him keep this board more clear, especially alongside the repentance because the next minion that gets played is going to go down to one health. So then that trades with the 1-1 one, one token that he has on board. And then the true silver comes down to take care of the 2-3 uh, Keeper of the Grove. And then suddenly Mysterious Challenger is just bang on this board, uh, dominating proceedings. So I like this line of play a lot. True. What are the options for Stan here? I think it's just slam the taunted Druid of the Claw, right? I actually don't hate charging Druid of the Claw. Honestly, okay, that's a good point. Because, you know, you're, you're you're trying to play around Repentance anyway. Yeah, so this is a really, really... Oh, good right, point. Repentance. Yeah, yeah, yeah so this, this I'm, is... A... I'm is, again, the, the secret icon. Yeah. But, you know, on top of that, not only does it play around Repentance, you're also... You have Innovate Combo in your hand. So just getting that damage done now means that, you know, this combo threatens lethal from this point forward. Mm -hmm. You have an answer why RDO, even if the Consecration would have a better play, would have keep it. Because there is an equality in his deck. Mm. That's a very good point. So we talked about how equality is rare in the deck, but mm -hmm. yeah. and he, most importantly, he didn't show it in the games before. Uh, he did not. But that aside, swipe face, hero power, anything, right? Is the play? Mm. Yeah, probably. Swipe face, hero power just to clear the noble sack, and then you have lethal the following turn. Uh, the paladins don't play any heals. They very, very rarely play something like a Noyatron, but apart from that, there's no taunts in the deck either. The only thing that stops you in uh, realistic worlds is uh, is lower third. So I feel like dunking this swipe into your opponent's face is a pretty, pretty straightforward play here to just set up the lethal on the following turn. Because can your opponent can your opponent really do ten damage on top of this from an empty board? I don't think so. No, most likely not. Yeah. Good ordering though. Hero power first. This way the swipe clears up the token as well. Pretty sure this swipe is going face. Yep. There we go. Mm -hmm. Now Ardu has to get on with the truce of a champion to be out of range of the combo. Mm -hmm. I mean that telegraphs at play, right? But he's already... Oh, look at that. He has a Noble Sacrifice, too. Oh, wow. Okay, that's the double protection. So, yeah. And he has Lethal with Consecration next turn, even yep. if, the, if the minion dies. Wow. Yep. So, this has worked out pretty poorly from Sifka, but it, I'm pretty confident this was the correct play. You have to... You're putting your opponent on very, very few outs. I, I did forget that True Silver was an additional out, um, even staring at it in, 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 in uh, RDU's hand, but... He'd already seen one true silver happen, so he's probably just going to have to use combo here to clear, mm -hmm, which is mm -hmm, yep, exactly what he's doing. So one of these is going to tank the Noble Sacrifice, the other two get to clear the 10-8, and then he gets to sink two damage wherever he likes, probably just to clear up the 1-1 at this point, because he's definitely bailing out of the uh, the race plan at this point. Yeah. What he has to draw is a Druid of the Claw to, or Ancient of War to just, you know, be, be safe from anything, but little he knows he's just dead to consecration. Yep. Kinda so, unfortunate for you if he advances to the finals, if he advances to the finals, because he just showed the equality in this hand. Yeah, we had no idea, right? We've seen yeah. several several games of this deck being played. I don't think we've seen the equality be drawn. No, yet, no, we so. didn't. We didn't. And there was some concealed information there from RDU that's that's been revealed, but most important thing, he got the win on the board. That's first things first. Um, mm -hmm. was, was probably a slightly favoured matchup for him. We've talked about how backbreaking things like Swipe can be in that matchup. Yeah. Um, but we saw, you know, Stan Sifka found himself really far behind. I think the swiping face play was definitely the route that, that gave him the best chance of winning the game. There were slightly more outs than I considered at first. Um, you know, Noble Sacrifice and, and, mm -hmm. and Lower Theb were the two that I thought of. But obviously the second True Silver just pulled him out of range as well. So... Hard luck for Stan Sifka, but a well-earned win for RDU. Yeah, interesting that even with that super valuable keeper, he didn't manage to, sque to squeeze the win, right? Right. Now, the keeper was basically removed two cards from your opponent for five mana. Mm -hmm. That's like insane value for a keeper. Yep. 
And not only that, it wasn't like it was a keeper that was played from behind. Like he had a 4-3 shade on the board at the same time. So mm -hmm. it was just mm -hmm. a really, really big tempo swing that gave him a super powerful board. But the important thing was that RDU picked the correct response. He had two choices. He could have consecrated or true silvered in response to that um, and cleared the board. You know, a lot of people would have gone with the consecrate option because it was a full board clear, but RDU made the correct play of developing the true silver, which is more value over the two turns and probably won the game because of it. But moving on, are we going to have another game where Stan Sifka gets to the dizzy heights of 80-something uh, of health that we saw him get to in the previous uh, matchup against Patron? <laughs> it's probably the, will be the same strategy. It seems like it, though. But, but this, this time, time yeah. yeah, exactly. He has Death Lords already in hand. I think he should fold up, right? He should just, just play those. Yep. I feel like even early execute at this point, you're not too worried about it. You have shield block, shield slam. You have an you have an execute of your own, and you have a brawl if everything goes horribly wrong. Um, and you're kind of safe in the knowledge that you play a second brawl. So if things do get ri ridiculously messy in the early game, you, you won't feel terrible about using that brawl to tidy up. So. Um, RDU just going to set up a board here, look to. Uh, get some sort of battle rage play off next turn mm -hmm, he has both mm -hmm. of them so you know even if he doesn't get injured this turn if he's able to just poke both of those minions into the the death lord that's still five cards drawn in total with the two battle rages and the the natural draw from the acolyte and i think uh, he would like to go for the both battle rages but solely because he has the emperor already in hand yeah and the coin so on turn five you can just drop it if you already uh, will have like a, another part of the combo of course how do you like skipping the attack here uh okay fine yeah building in more armor is probably better i think like the hierarchy of options there attacking the armor smith was probably the best one um attacking yeah definitely not attacking face attacking face was definitely the worst thing that you could mm -hmm. do that turn. Yeah. So i think the middle option is skipping the attack altogether um but it doesn't really do much because if your opponent wants the damage on the armor smith for the battle rage they can just make the attack anyway so you might as well just poke into the, the armor smith mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Bouncing Blades, and as I said, this seems to me to be a pretty terrible card in this matchup. It can kill, like, Emperor on an empty board, but for the most part, what are you using it for in this sort of matchup? It feels like maybe using it just to get rid of a 2-4 No Mission Venter might not be a terrible use of the card. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. I'm thinking about it, but nothing strikes, you know, a bell instantly. I mean, I was advocating using it to kill your own shield maiden in the last matchup, so hopefully he can find a better usage of it than that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, he has Throating Berserker, Unstable Ghoul, and that's basically it from the combo pieces. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, that's not a bad drop from the uh, from the Death Lord. It's not def terrible. Definitely not like to see a patron right now. And I love him holding on to the Dread Corsair this turn because with double Battle Rage in his hand, Next turn, he can definitely injure himself down into battle range, range and mm -hmm, he can definitely mm -hmm, play mm -hmm. the Dread Corsair on the board. So at a bare minimum, even if this board gets completely cleared away, at a bare minimum, he can still play the two battle rages next turn to draw four cards um, by holding the Dread Corsair in his hand this turn. Yep. Very good observation. And that's the power of um, the Dread Corsair. It's not definitely a card that you'll use like a I mean, it has it's very universal, and that's very cool to see. And we okay, okay. So he does end up finding a pretty good use for bouncing blade. Gets a ball clear that he wouldn't have been able to achieve otherwise. So, uh, pretty bad card in the matchup, as I said, that he's managed to use pretty effectively. But we are just going to see the big cycle turn. Wait, wait, wait. you don't have to enrage that. No, but you get the other minion first, right? This way. If he'd have attacked, the Death Lord was in play before the Death Spike. So yes, so you can injure your, your minion to get Battle Rages. Because I was thinking oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. Battle Rages, to attack first. Whoa! Okay, he played Emperor before cycling the Battle Rages. Yeah, that's what. That that's really weird for cannot me. Cannot be right. Yeah. Uh, that's why I thought, like, you just played the Dread Corsair, attack into the Death Lord, yeah. you get your Battle Rages for three cards each, yeah. right? Because the first. Effect from the the effect from the depth will be triggered first, so you get a minion. Yep. The minion will get damage from the uh, from the depth spot. You play yep. two battle rages, get six cards, and then you skip the turn or just armor up or whatever. Seems legit. <laughs> I'm gonna say that sounds like a much better turn than just playing emperor on this fairly lackluster hand. 
Generally, if you have Emperor in your hand and a bunch of Cycle, you want to Cycle the Cycle before you play Emperor. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. almost every other card in the deck is better to discount than the Cycle cards. If you, yes. If, and you're, if you're in an OTK matchup. If you're in a Tempo matchup, turn 6 Emperor is totally fine. And yeah. just use the discounts on whatever you got to do whatever you can. But, but in, in this OTK, situation, yeah. yeah in an OTK matchup, you have to Cycle first. Especially that... that in this situation, he actually does that. He he does the exact same plan as he could have gone with Lester. And he hasn't managed to injure himself in the process because there isn't a minion on the board this time. Mm -hmm. So he's actually losing out on card draws as well. Definitely a misplay. Really, really strange line of play here from RDU. Um, but you know, he does fill up his hand here, but now he's left of, of his Emperor's cards. And, our, and Stan Sifka will be keeping track of this as well. Of his Emperor's mm -hmm. cards, he now only has two left. Um, so, you know, Stan Sifka can actually put him on a reasonable range of what he's capable of doing, which isn't the case if uh, you Emperor, you know, six or seven cards. At that point, all bets are off. You might be able to do anything. Um, but, you know, with only two Emperor's cards, you can actually, you know, make some intuitive plays as to what your opponent is capable of doing, what his max damage is if you have decent amount of experience in the patron matchup um so yeah having to spend out all of his patron card all of his uh emperor cards that turn is actually a pretty big downside for, for rdu mm -hmm. that's true i mean the matchup is terrible to begin with yep not but deny that. i think the the play that he he would have get before the emperor might have been game winning if he hits like you know jackpot on the parts of the combo yeah, I absolutely agree with you. It does seem a, a very, very strange line of play from RDU, who, as, as we both mentioned at the start, has been you know, perhaps the standout player in terms of you know, consistently finding the right lines throughout the tournament so far. So one of, uh, one of his first major missteps, as you said, it's a pretty rough matchup nonetheless. So you know, maybe he just felt like taking the risk that Emperor could stick two turns and maybe felt like that was his win condition. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just trying to find some way to get into his head, but. There we go. Looks like he's going to commit to the board with the Grim Patron this turn, and it's going to get punished by uh, one of two brawls that we see in Stan Sivka's hand. So. Yeah. And after losing the first Patron, what is, what's your plan? You need to draw the Warzone Commander, and your opponent is slowly, slowly rolling out of range of your combo. Yeah. Especially with the Justicar. This will just escalate very quickly. quickly. Yeah, I mean, let's look at what he can do with 10 mana. So he has double frothing and unstable ghoul in his hand for six. So if he draws a war song, that's nine mana already dedicated to the combo. So he mm -hmm. can only play one additional whirlwind alongside it. Um, and then, you know, if he has a death spy up as well, that is the three whirlwinds he needs. Um, so, you know, arguably he does have enough just by hitting the, the frothing berserker and the unstable ghoul in his hand. There's definitely an argument to say that. Um, it looks like he's going to use his first Warsong Commander here just to invest some patron value into the board. Um, just start getting a little bit of damage rolling, put some, you know, keep the armor under control. Don't let Stan Sifka spiral too far out of control. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think this is a reasonable line of play, especially with only four cards in your opponent's hand. Um, this is kind of the low point in terms of um, Stan Sifka's hand size this game. So he's probably about as unlikely to have Brawl right now as he ever will be, because he only has four cards in hand. So I kind of like yeah. taking the risk this turn. Mm-hmm, that sounds fine. I mean, I can't even add anything to this conversation. <laughs> well said. A lot of damage piling on. Uh, the problem is you only have one Wind effect left for your Frothing Berserker. I feel like you have to do damage here. Yes. Uh, if but, he has a brawl, you will lose this anyway. Yeah, but he still has the weapon attack, right? So he was just deciding about... Yeah, he could have used the weapon to clear the Justicar and gone face, but then he would have had the full patron board, so something like mm -hmm. Baron Geddon is actually relatively effective. Um, so I don't mind him clearing the one spot on his board that just gets punished by a brawl either way. So. Look at that. That's a really... Really interesting turn. If you wouldn't have that death spite up, didn't draw like well, if you wouldn't draw that card, the mm -hmm. whirlwind blade is just so awful. Yeah. <laughs> I can't <laughs> a single patron after a brawl. 
Yeah, try and bouncing blade a grim patron. Just a one three three grim patron. You just fill up their entire board with three threes again. Most likely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now Adio has the second wars gonna wait. Mm. So he's now back in a situation where if he draws a death bite, he can do the three whirlwinds he needs. Right? He has three. Oh wait, that's three six. Yeah, yeah, we're right. So actually just hitting the, the frobbing and the unstable ghoul has actually turned out to kind of be enough to keep him uh, moving forward to actually having a win condition in this game. He's just kind of patiently waiting for death by it. But the problem is he can't activate his unstable ghoul at all. Unless a and is played, right? Yeah, and Stan Sivka might just not play a minion for the whole game. Sure. Um, the one way you can kind of... Um, cheat that situation is if you draw an inner rage um so you have the two whirlwinds already the one that you'll have from the death bite and then the one whirlwind that you do have and then you can just use the inner rage to pop your ghoul and therefore get a third whirlwind um but yeah that that requiring him now to draw death bite and inner rage to set his combo off um when every turn he passes he's getting four damage further away from killing him because of the tank up hero power um, yeah, this is this is what we talked about with with just a car by itself just being a win condition against Patron Warrior. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a Gnomish. That's nice. That at least cycles itself out of the deck, gets you closer to the death spite. Wow. Almost a lot of cards. Wow. Three, six, nine cards left. Uh... Yeah, I think. I, I think Patron is is correct. Here. Yeah, I yeah. actually agree. <laughs> It's it's really weird, but you only have one war song left, and that war song is definitely being you. No, 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 wait, 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 no, no, don't play the unstable ghoul. I, the last card is in a rage, right? Or did he use two? Uh, he has he hasn't used both despite, right? Have I been talking? Oh yeah, right. This entire time. Wait, wait, wait. Has he used both despite? Then he used double inner rages. I don't feel like he's used both despite. It's entirely possible I've been talking nonsense this whole time and he doesn't have any death bites left. I'm not putting Well, we'll see in a few seconds. I'm not putting that out of the range of possibility. Out of cards, and it is there a death There we go. Alright. Alright. Face has been saved. I'm not a complete idiot, just a partial one. So, how much damage is that? Two wins, and. Well, that's it, basically. Yep, because he has no way of popping the ghoul since there's no inner rages left in the deck. So he is required here for Stan Sivka to make a mistake and play a minion in order to win this game. And I somehow just don't think that's going to happen. He did last game. He played a shield maiden that was entirely unnecessary. Mm -hmm, um, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to put it out of the realms of possibility. But yeah, it, it, it seems like just bashing this thing down um, and pressing the tank up button in that is just GG. Yeah, because you have only... Four minions on board, and that's eight damage per whirlwind. So sixteen damage for two whirlwinds, and that's basically it. Yep, that's not enough. So he just needs to do it and hope that it sticks to the board. So that's basically his own his only win condition at this point. But unfortunately, second brawl says hi from Stan Sitka's deck, and he is just going to go ahead and level up this series. Um, we'll see all the pretty animations happen. We'll see a decent amount of damage being dealt to uh, Stan Sitka's face, but... Once... But it's not impressive at all when you see a 27 armor from a warrior exactly. stacked on. Yeah, and uh, yeah, once once the Baron Geddon or the brawl comes down here, we're going to see the concede button pressed quite rapidly by RDU. So this series is tied up at one game apiece. Mm -hmm. I really like this deck. I mean, I'm wondering how it will do on ladder. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will try it while I stream because I really love the uh, inclusion of the new cards. N new, uh, right? Because uh, it's um, <laughs> Woven Blade and Gorhal. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, additional damage. Look at that. Yep. Oh, no, there right, we go. Nice. Brawl happens and concede happens, just yeah, and as expected. Yeah. Honorable, honorable uh, Lexus right now. And that's it. <laughs> what? <laughs> How did we get to Lexus? Mitsubishi, I, I kind of went with you. <laughs> Last time Lexus. was Mitsubishi, now we just upgraded. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so the well, game is tied, uh, or the series is tied at one game apiece, and uh, we are going to see now the Patron Warrior go up against the Druid. Mm-hmm. And that's not the best matchup for any of the deck. 
and everything. Okay, it's a 50-50, right? Yeah, it's a very, very even matchup. Um, personally, like, I'm a very heavy patron player myself. It's one of those things where um, if there's a matchup where, like, the players of one class say that they're favoured and the players who are good at the other class say that they're favoured, that probably just means it's 50-50. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's probably what we end up with here. It's uh, it's definitely a very even matchup. Depends very heavily on how quick the druid start is and how quickly a uh, patron can dig to a uh, patron generation combo. True. And now we'll just see. Like the hand of RDU is not exactly bad. He's missing the inner rage. He has the death spy, which is super important. And Stan Sivka is lacking the Harrison Johns. Yup. Um, and he's also lacking a, a particularly consistent curve here. He can he can choose to play nothing on turn four, or he can choose to coin out a sludge belcher and have nothing to follow it up on turn five. So, um, not a wonderful choice here. But for Stan Sifka, he can he, if he coins out the sludge belcher. Basically, what you're saying is that there's going to be targets for you to swipe or wrath next turn, and that will be your turn five, or just trusting your deck that you're going to draw something else to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but you know, how do you feel about this here? Can you pass another turn without getting any pressure onto the onto the patron player here? I think you're pushed to that, uh, that position. You can't really sacrifice the coin when you're looking so grim. When you're when just if you whip on another draw, mm -hmm. if you coin out the belcher right now, mm -hmm. it's really hurting. And he has double seven drops in his hand as well, right? Which just yeah. makes it makes the coin look pretty appealing. So. Yeah, you have to just hero power here. Yeah. And Stan Sipka seems not to be happy with the choice, of course. Yeah, feels bad, man. Turn four hero power with Druid. No ramp so far, no minions so far. And we're going to see on turn six, he is able to activate his Grim Patrons. So this is not looking like a good game here for uh, mm -hmm, Stan mm -hmm. Sipka. And it's not about the Emperor. It's not about the Patrons. It's only yeah. about the Patrons because... A, uh, the druid has really not a lot of options when it comes to clearing the board and swipe, which is usually the best way, is the worst way in this case. Yep, you basically need something else, like you have a minion on board, have a wrath and a swipe, you know, that's like the prerequisite for swipe to be good. So that situation very rarely happens when you're up against something like a death spite beforehand, because death spite is just so effective at, at chopping down your board. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So RDU is going to go through the formalities here and consider all the options, but Death Spite trade here just looks pretty glorious, right? Of course. Seems like the best option every single time. Mm -hmm. RDU definitely thinking about something, though. Well, what, what's the other option? Slam, whirlwind? No, it's double, it's, double slam? It's double slam and trade, slam and execute to retain your minion. These are all, <sighs> th these are all things that you can do. What you should be doing is setting up your Death Spite Whirlwind to win the game next turn. The only concern which RDU can have is a Harrison Jones. But yeah. if, there's a, it's a, if there's a Harrison Jones, it will be played at some point against a Death Spite without the patrons on board. So, for sure. Makes no difference. Yeah. I mean, even like another minor upside of this play, just to make it even more appealing, you put yourself to the absolute perfect health total this turn. 29 is the best health total for Patron Warrior. Mm -hmm, to ever be mm -hmm. at. So, yeah. you know, there's just a lot of things going for this play, so it just has to end up being right. And uh, Dr. Boom is going to come down here, and that does briefly, very, very briefly, uh, put a stop to the patron plan, potentially, because he can choose to go for the safe option here, but no. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, so he could have just slam executed and then thrown away the whirlwind just to have the board clear and then gone with the patron in a rage and the death fight swing the turn after. But he's I just like this more. yeah he's just going to risk the boombot RNG and then go ahead and use the execute and boombot RNG has not gone well for him. No, not at all, and that will mean the Stan will be able to clear the board. Uh, at this point, do you like whirlwinding again better than executing? And uh, I think that's led. I think that's a legit um, play here, because yeah. otherwise you you leave your board open to let's say Savage Roar Wrath. Yep. Uh, no, sorry, Savage Roar Wrath is not enough. A double Wrath, Wrath's uh, well, wide. Savage, Savage Roar Wrath's fine, right? You have oh yeah, Savage. It's seven. Yeah, Sa yeah. Savage Roar Hero Power Wrath. Savage Roar Hero Power Wrath. Yes, yep. it's enough. So there are too many options to clear those patrons. So yep. RDU yeah. sees it. Yeah, this is absolutely the right play here. I think. 
Correct. Correct. There's a wrecked in correct. <laughs> it's getting late, Lothar. I can feel it. You're losing your grip on reality. Yeah. <laughs> First Lexus, now correct. Yeah. Okay. In before Lothar spawns new Twitch chat memes. I, I would love to get a quick VOD from the um, voice problems we yeah. had in no. the beginning. So I can just put a YouTube film of me being a Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yep, fair enough. So... Back to the game, looking at what Sifka has in his hand right now, does he have any sort of attractive option for a ball clear? So the Savage Raw Wrath is still an option. That takes down three patrons, but it is also your whole turn. Is mm -hmm. taking down three patrons good enough to justify using your whole turn on here? Probably yes, right? I Probably yes. Mm -hmm. I think you can read into the fact that your opponent um, thought so hard last turn that he was deciding between Whirlwind and Execute. Yes. That's uh, so you can put the read on your opponent that he has an execute in his hand. If he has an execute in his hand, this board disappears pretty quickly, and you're running the risk of there just being too many patrons for you to deal with next time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very, very good observation. And now RTU has to use the slam first on the ancient of law, right? You want to um, get a taskmaster. We know he's running one. Yeah. You want to get inner rage. Uh, you want to get war song commander. War song commander, also be exactly. Fine. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because so yes. you can clear the Doctor Boom. Oh, he's going for a double slam on the Unstable Ghoul. Oh, okay, this is cute. I kind of like this. But it doesn't deal. It doesn't deal with the. Uh, with Doctor Boom. It's fine. He can still use an execute. Just trade one patron afterwards into what into the Doctor Boom and then execute the five five. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To be honest, yeah, that's even better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's I a really, really like, love this play. Though. That's a really, really cute play. Not something that I was looking at, but yeah, definitely uh, a way to take the RNG out of what you top deck with the slam and just guarantee generating more patrons on the board. Really, really good play from RDU. Very impressive. And now, there's still one mana lacking for that swipe, which doesn't do anything, to be honest. Nope, even as your Drake swipe here doesn't get the job done. Hmm. So I think you're just kind of out of luck at this point. Warrior's at 29 health, so there's no way that you can even engage a race in this kind of situation. Um, I think you're just in trouble, and it is, uh, it's feel, feels bad man time, and uh, this game is probably just a loss. Um, Stan Sifka, Stan Sifka's no quitter though. I'm sure he'll try and find a route where he maybe has a chance to win this game, but I think he's fighting a very, very uphill battle from this point. Yep. Uh, well, I mean, you can only play like Keeper of the Grove is really bad. It's not, it's not a viable card in this situation. No, absolutely. Not. Only Ash Drake and uh and a Wrath or a Shade of Extreme is an option here. Yeah, and I like Wrathing. I mean, this is almost better anyway because the Patron Warrior is kind of low on cards. So maybe if you manage to get a grip back on this board, you can starve him out. So using the Wrath there to cycle is just like extra good for card advantage because you cycle mm -hmm, and you also mm -hmm. deny your opponent a cycle from battle rage if that's a card in his hand but honestly any sort of battle rage even for two cards there is going to be good enough to give the, the patron warrior the resources that he needs do you like the um taskmaster to trade the as drake uh, do you have board advantage and you don't want to play more minions I think, like, you don't want to develop the board. Taskmaster the 3-2, right? And just trade into the Drake? Yes. With the 5-1? And yeah. just attack with the free, uh, free patrons and just hero power past the turn. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, I would absolutely don't hate playing the Frothing Berserker alongside it, though, either, because now, now you're really taking Swipe out of the equation entirely, because next turn, um, the second Azure Drake and Swipe can come into play, and now this board is even more of a mess against Swipe than it was. Because the thing that has is it? To, yeah, the thing that has to be swiped here is the frothing berserker, right? Or you're dead. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then but, every single patron you hit spawns a new patron. But it's only it's only one. I can see. Uh, yeah. Okay. But the point is that it doesn't matter, right? You you the, they will retain lethal on board against yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. swipe. So mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. that's 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 the big the the big picture, I guess. Yeah, of course. Okay. So are you take the lead two to one, and he's left with. Druid. 
Druid indeed. So he has Druid and he has to win one matchup against either Hanlock or the Druid Mirror. So he has one 50-50 and one favored matchup. So he's looking in pretty good shape to take the series from here. There are small tweaks that I can like shift the 50-50. An example, sure. if one of the players is playing Harrison Jones and the other one is not, yep. that can make a a really huge difference if one of the players plays Sylvanan, Sylvanas mm -hmm. and the other doesn't that yep. also shifts a little bit yep. so few stuffs can a few a uh, few things can change <laughs> sorry i just i just caught out of the corner of my eye twitch chat are going crazy about the honorable car thing we've now got <laughs> honorable toyota honorable mazda <laughs> like everything in chat right now so. <laughs> Uh, brief distraction, I apologize. Um, this, this hand isn't terrible. Um, as far as hands full of ramp go, generally you don't really have anything to go with them and you run out of cards. But triple ramp into Ancient of Lore is not bad at all. Mm-hmm. Doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad. It's, it's, it, and it only doesn't look bad because he has the Ancient of Lore. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise, it's just a pretty appalling hand. Even with the Druid of the Claw top deck, it's not that great because you still end up relying on the top of your deck too much. And Druid does play a surprising amount of situational cards that just aren't good top decks. So. Hmm. Well, next turn, Druid with the Claw, then you followed up by Ancient of Lore. You have the Keeper in case there's a Twilight Drake this turn. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, actually, it's, it's true. But there's no key. Uh, sorry, no Twilight Drake. Mm -hmm. Would you favor the Twilight Drake in this situation? Um, it's scary, right? Because your opponent has ramped up to exactly six mana, which is the number he needs for uh, the Keeper of the Grove plus hero power. But mm -hmm. uh, with this hand, maybe coining out the Drake is okay. It's hard to say. Um, but he's just going to go with the Mountain Giant here, and I like this. Just, just playing the odds game, there's two Keepers and one big game Hunter in the deck. So this is less likely to get answered. Um, unless you're facing Firebat. Yeah, unless you're facing Firebat, who uh, seems to absolutely love big game hunters this tournament. Well, now you have to play the Edge of Law, right? It's too good, yeah. Getting two extra cards into your hand that, to get discounted just seems far too appealing this turn. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and do that thing. No? Oh, really? Hmm. So you want to play Pile to Shredder 2 this turn? If you, because if you play Druid of the Claw, you innovate the Pile to Shredder. Right. And that's kind of awkward against board clears, right? It is, yeah, but I mean, you it's not like the Giant can do the hit you in the face thing in Shadow Flame. Um, it has to hit the Taunt, and then he's actually choosing not to innovate. He's just straight up playing the Druid of the Claw to protect his Emperor for another turn. That's really interesting. Don't you think that's um, not interesting, but just bad? <laughs> I, mean... I mean, so there's two uh, there's two ways to look at this, right? Playing the Ancient of Law gets you more cards immediately. You guarantee getting a good Emperor effect on more cards. Mm -hmm. By playing the Taunt to protect your Emperor, that's kind of the same thing, right? It's the same sort of long-term investment in getting multiple Emperor effects. It's just you're getting multiple effects on the, on yes. the same cards. That's true, but uh, there's one difference. You still, has, you still have your Druid of the Claw double uh, with double uh, discount mm -hmm. with a viable charge mode yep um and look at that if he would actually uh, draw cards less turn he would he have, have innovated big game hunter right? yes yeah exactly. that's that's another plus to it as well i guess um yeah i mean i was willing to play devil's advocate because i don't think it was outright wrong that turn but yeah consider me convinced i i buy into your argument there i think the ancient of law was just a lot better Interesting. So now you have to commit to the Pilot Shredder. Yeah, I think at this point, you know that Big Game Hunter will get full value at some point in this matchup, so it doesn't really seem fantastic to just Big Game Hunter and 8 4 here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, Pilot Shredder onto the board seems pretty reasonable. And then do you just protect your Emperor for another turn? I mean, you can pick up a trade here if you want, but you know, would you rather just have the, the, the discount again? Is there really any particularly great cards in your hand to discount? The big game hunter is pretty nice to put down to two. It is, uh, especially that you have also Swipe and Wrath on a discount. Yeah. So you can really make a good board clear for, for six mana. 
Oh. He does decide to trade, though, respecting wow. the 8 4 on the board. Um, I guess Shadow Flame this turn is yeah, but it's really like devastating, but. Only one card, right, in this in your opponent deck, and the discount on five cards, well, basically on four, yeah. might have been more important. Oh! Wrathguard. I mean, that's not that bad. That actually puts the low tip on on a swipe range. Yeah, I mean, Wrathguard's a fantastic draw from Pilot Shredder. I think people, over, like, seriously overreact to the downside of this card. Like, it's a 4-3 coming out of Pilot Shredder. Are you happy if you get Succubus? Yes, of course you are, so... Double innovate. Ooh. Yeah. Not what he really wanted to see that turn, but Wrath to Cycle and Swipe is looking pretty appealing this turn. Mm hmm. Then you finish off. No, you can't. Mm, never mind. Oh, Wrath into Innovate, Swipe into Innovate, Hero, Hero Power. power. <laughs> wow, he found use for his Innovates, Lothar. And here we were talking crap about those Innovates. They turned out to be fantastic. Hmm. That's pretty good, right? Ancient Watcher goes down to the Innovate Hero Power, and no. Oh, he just swiped the 2-3 instead. Interesting. Okay, I didn't see that coming. Hmm. I guess he's valuing the second Innovate in his hand just in case he draws into multiple combo pieces and he can really put together some uh, some big burst combos. Obviously, the Ancient Watcher isn't a threat on the board, but you do have to get through it at some point, so just the clean swipe play that turn looked, uh, looked pretty stellar to me, but... How do you going down a different line here? True. Mm, doesn't it didn't really matter that much because you will punch through that minion eventually. Yeah, but this way you're going to punch through it with minion combat. So you know, unless you're unless you're planning to silence it, like the the ancient watcher is probably going to pick up a trade with a minion, whereas you mm -hmm, had the chance mm -hmm. to deny it that and just you know deal with it with a spell and face damage instead. So isn't that kind of more? Wait, wait, how much damage do we have? Uh, it's lethal, right? Is it? He has Innovate Silence as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's lethal. Wow. Yep. So that, that, that's the um, that's the like the scenario in this tournament, right? We are talking about something, and it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, oh look at that. <laughs> so RDU continues his road to victory, and is advancing to the final. Cool. Cool for him. Congratulations, RDU, and for my team. And yeah. so, uh, the final will be between Archon and Nihilum. Uh, Orange versus RDU. Too bad for Stan Sivka and Luminosity. He was really close to advancing to the finals, but uh, Druid does it again. Just Druid things. And oh, mm, 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 what do we have to say now before the finals? Practically nothing. We'll be jumping into a short uh, break. Uh, we get to get hold of Orange. Uh, but it. Before the break with just a short announcement, just to remind you guys, um, this channel is a new channel. This is the first tournament uh, that was, that is being organized by Abius and more tournaments are to come. So be sure to click that follow button on, uh, beneath the stream or the subscribe button too, if you will <laughs> like. And be sure to get notifi notified um, with the new uh, with, with new upcoming tournaments that will be organized in the future because I'm sure there will be new ones seeing how much people actually watch today's tournament. We got a peak new record in the peak uh, of viewers, 45k. Nice. So, super nice. Yeah, uh, and thank I you guys I think, for watching. I think all the guys watching as well can agree that like the production value of this tournament has been fantastic. The source quality looks amazing. Yeah. The overlay is nice. It's not too intrusive. There haven't been any issues with um, you know, any sort of um, player cam switching or anything like that. No real production mistakes. So it's just been a really nice production put together. So it's in your interest to follow this channel. If you want to see this high level of production put to work on other games that you enjoy watching. So yeah. go ahead. And no downtimes also. We didn't have any pauses like, you know, for 20 minutes or something like that. Right. So really cool. And also remember, you can tweet about the tournament with the hashtag AbiusGT. And uh, then you have a chance of winning uh, a Battle.net gift card um, in the giveaway. You can also type exclamation mark giveaway to participate in the giveaway too by clicking into the link. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested in seeing how the bracket, bracket uh, is looking right now, just type exclamation mark bracket or go to the abusgaming.com 
and see how nice is the website. And yeah, this is it. We'll be going for a 10 minute break. So you can go make yourself a, a tea or a coffee or something else. And we'll see each other in a short 